This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, so that last example and the last scenarios that we had were whereby the sale and this sale and lease back transaction were at fair value. What happens, however, if the sale isn't at fair value? So it will either be above fair value or below fair value. OK, so what you've got here, if it's below the market terms. Then what you will have there. Will be a prepayment, so effectively. You're receiving less cash uh, than what you should based on the fair value. So because you're receiving less cash, you would pay less cash back. But the key bit that we want within our financial statements is we want to reflect fair value, don't we? So therefore, we will need to go through there and reflect the fair value of the transaction. And in doing so, therefore, that the payments that we have are less, but we want to get the payments back up to market values. So therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to recognize a prepayment based upon the reduction between the fair value and the proceeds that we've had. And then we'll release that prepayment over the life of the lease to match up against the lower rentals that we are making. OK, uh, and then if it is at above market terms, then that's saying, look, you've got more money than what there was with regards to the fair value. So that is the just additional financing so effectively we just add it on to the borrowings so effectively adding on to the value of the lease liability so let's go through and have a look at the example is it there for sale and lease back what you see here is that it's the same scenario so i've tried to keep it as simple as possible which is difficult because it's a complex transaction uh, but what you've got there however is we need to account for is it the sale and lease back okay uh, again in the first bit it's there at nine million just note that i will go through and get it corrected uh, and then the second part it's there at 11 million okay so here what you've got is that the building is sold for nine million so that is less than the market rate or the market rentals or the market value uh, and 11 million is more than the market value okay and then after that everything is exactly the same uh, we've still got the same company uh, we're still funding it via a 10-year lease uh, the payments of one million just note that the payments might possibly change if the, the the nine million and the 11 million were to happen okay uh, but we'll just keep it simple for the time being uh, the fair value of the building is 10 the carrying value is 8.4 and the interest is five percent so everything is exactly the same okay so what's what's the big issue so what you've got there is the first scenario is at 9 million and that is below the rentals okay, or below the fair value of this building. So the key bit is that you have to work everything as if it was at fair value first because what we're going to go through and do that uh, is we're going to go through and record the proceeds. So you would debit the bank. Is it there now with with the nine million? Okay. Uh, what we're going to go through and do there is that we will still debit that right of use asset. Is it there with the six? four eight six two five seven 
we still credit the lease liability with the 7721735 because that's effectively what you would be looking at uh, with regards to the rentals being at market rates. You would still credit the PPE based upon the fair value. Well, here we got rid of it, was it? Sorry, at the 8.4 million. Uh, you're, you're still keeping the right of use asset in there based upon the carrying value uh, and the fair value that you should have got. We then credit the statement of profit or loss with our gain. So is that the 364522? And um, what you have there is that there is then a balancing figure. The balancing figure is a debit. That debit is a prepayment. And it's there as the one million, isn't it? Okay. Because effectively what would happen is we've received less, haven't we? You know, by debiting the bank here, we've received less than what we should have. If we have received less, then we're probably going to pay less, aren't we? So when we're making the lease rentals, we're crediting the bank and debiting the finance lease payable. Oh, sorry, finance lease payable. I still got IS17 in my head. Apologies. When I make the lease payments, I credit the bank, debit the lease payable. But we're not debiting it with, with as much as what we should be, should it? So what we're going to go through and do is we're going to release that prepayment by crediting the prepayment and debiting the liability. So let's just say uh, previously we had to pay a million dollars every year. No, we've only received nine out of the 10 million. So we're, re we're receiving 10% less. So maybe we pay 10% less. So maybe the payments are $900,000. But that $900,000 when I make those payments isn't going to extinguish that full lease liability over the 10 years at the 5%. So I need to release that prepayment over the 10 years to be able to compensate for the fact that we are paying less, okay? It is tricky, but there we have it. Uh, in scenario B, so that's the, is it at the 11 million, which is above fair value. Uh, what we've got here effectively is we've borrowed one million dollars more, haven't we? Okay, so what you've got there is that you debit the bank. With the 11 million, you still debit the right of use asset. Is that right of use asset there with the six million? Four hundred and eighty six thousand two hundred and fifty seven. So remember, you would still work that all out based upon fair value. Uh, you would still go through and credit the PPE because if there has been a sale, you remove the PPE and recognize a right of use asset to show that it is a leased asset. You still have the credit for the gain on transfer. So again, that would all be based on fair value. But the issue that you've got now is that when you credit the liability, previously it was 7,721,000. Now what we're going to do there is add 1 million to it. So the eight seven two one now seven three five. You have just gone through there and increased it by one million dollars because of the extra 
financing. Where does that extra financing come from? Well, we've financed 11 million. That's what we've received. And the fair value is 10 million. That's what we should have received. We didn't. We received a little bit more. So we add in that extra 1 million with regards to the additional financing. There we go. Don't spend too long on it. If it crops up, it might be a multiple choice question for two marks. You could spend days and days on this and it's just genuinely not worth it for the two marks that you're going to get in the multiple choice question. If it cropped up within the published company accounts question, I don't recall seeing that in F7. It, it may have cropped up a long, long time ago, but yeah, in recent memory, uh, there was nothing there. Okay, In fact, my most recent recollection of sale and leaseback transactions was actually in P2 under the old IS17 standard. Uh, it, it's obviously going to appear in the new SBR. Uh, it will appear as well uh, as a, a full question in SBR, testing on the detail of it, but I just really can't see it making much of an appearance within financial reporting. But it's up to you. It's on the syllabus. Play around with it. But remember, the way to pass this exam is focusing on the basics. Is that basic? Don't focus on it.